Hello, and welcome to Environment and Climate Change Canada's information session on the pulp and paper production reporting requirements. These requirements are applicable to those facilities subject to the Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program's expanded reporting requirements for 2019, which includes pulp and paper production facilities. We'll begin the session by introducing the expansion of the GHGRP and the pulp and paper requirements. We'll then explore the specific pulp and paper production reporting and quantification requirements, and then we'll wrap up by describing the resources available to help reporters. Here's a quick summary of the GHGRP and its recent expansion. The Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program administers the annual mandatory reporting of greenhouse gas emissions by facilities under the authority of Section 46 of the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. In 2017, Phase 1 of the GHGRP expansion was implemented. This phase included the following changes. First, the reporting threshold was lowered from 50 kilotons to 10 kilotons in carbon dioxide equivalent units. And second, the lime, cement, aluminum, iron and steel, and carbon capture, transport, and storage sectors were required to quantify their emissions using prescribed methods and report additional data that is associated with those calculations. In 2018, we implemented phase two of the expansion. Similarly, there are additional requirements by sector. Specifically, this includes ammonia, base metal, electricity and heat, ethanol, hydrogen, mining, nitric acid, petroleum refining, and pulp and paper sectors. For 2019, while some small adjustments have been made, this year continues the same requirements from the first two phases of the expansion. Pulp and paper production reporting requirements are found in Schedule 17 of the 2019 GHGRP notice and prescribed quantification methods are found in Section 12 of Canada's Greenhouse Gas Quantification Requirements document. For this sector, industrial process emissions from carbonate use in the chemical recovery process are to be reported as well as any wastewater emissions. The lime production reporting captured in Schedule 8 of the 2019 notice and the related quantification requirements are not applicable to pulp and paper facilities. Industrial process emissions from lime kilns at pulp and paper facilities are covered under the pulp and paper reporting schedule, Schedule 17 of the notice. Note that while not discussed in this video tutorial, fuel combustion and flaring reporting requirements are applicable to pulp and paper facilities as well. These requirements are discussed in a separate video tutorial. With respect to reporting requirements, pulp and paper facilities must report annual carbon dioxide emissions from the addition of carbonates as well as annual methane and nitrous oxide emissions from wastewater treatment. Some additional parameters are also required to be reported depending on the method chosen. These may include quantities and carbon contents of input and output carbonates as well as the fraction of calcination achieved by carbonate type. Finally, the annual quantity of pulp produced must also be reported. With respect to quantification requirements, there are multiple methodologies that may be applied for determining process CO2 emissions from the addition of carbonates. The mass balance methodology uses the carbon content of inputs and outputs to calculate emissions, while the emission factor method uses the fraction of calcination achieved. Continuous emissions monitoring systems may also be used, if available, but keep in mind that process emissions must be separated from fuel combustion emissions. Methane and nitrous oxide emissions from wastewater treatment are to be calculated as well using the methods provided for wastewater treatment at petroleum refineries in Section 11 of the Quantification Requirements document. The quantification of methane emissions considers the quantity of wastewater treated, the chemical or biochemical oxygen demand, methane generation capacity, and methane correction factor. The methane correction factor is based on the treatment type. For example, the methane correction factor for aerobic treatment that is well maintained is zero, which results in an estimate of zero methane emissions from treatment. 
Quantification of nitrous oxide emissions considers the quantity of wastewater treated and the nitrogen content in the influent wastewater stream. Facilities that are subject to the federal output-based pricing system regulations may be aware that there are required methods to follow for quantifying emissions to be reported in the OBPS annual report. These methods are also allowable for your GSGRP report. Please note that the OBPS regulations refer to the GHGRP's 2017 methods for quantifying fuel combustion emissions. In the GHGRP reporting module, there is a section where you must indicate if you are using these methods for your GHGRP report. If you select Yes for this option, the methodologies that you can select on the subsequent screens no longer refer to the 2019 GHGRP methods. They refer either to the 2017 GHGRP methods or other applicable OBPS methodologies. Note that it is not mandatory to use the OBPS required quantification methodologies for reporting to the GHGRP. It is an option for those facilities subject to the OBPS regulations. Further, in the OBPS reporting system, there is a function provided that will generate an OBPS to GHGRP printout based on the emissions you are reporting in the annual OBPS report. This is not intended for facilities that are subject to expanded GHGRP requirements. In the GHGRP report, after reporting the detailed information for each applicable activity, there is a function that automatically populates the total emissions categories based on the previous emissions information provided. Therefore, there is no need to use the printout. To wrap up, this slide lists the resources available to help facilities in completing their GHGRP report. Our website listed here is the place to go where you can find a link to the 2019 GHGRP notice, which describes the latest reporting requirements. Also included on our website is a link to the GHG quantification requirements document, which is mandatory for those subject to the expansion. You will also find the technical guidance document on reporting greenhouse gas emissions. This helps to explain the notice and specific technical requirements. You will also find a link to access the single window system and the following guidance on using this online system to submit your report. There's swim guidance including video tutorials on accessing single window for the first time, connecting your profile to an organization, and managing organization information. And we also provide enhanced step-by-step -step instructions on submitting a GHG report. There's also a page dedicated to more commonly asked questions and answers. And of course, you can contact the GHG Help Desk with any questions you may have. And you this year are a series of video tutorials available on YouTube to help explain the requirements, common reporting issues, and how to prepare your GHGRP report. Finally, here is how you can reach the GHGRP. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions and also have a look at all the resources available to you. We encourage you to check out the additional recordings available, including information sessions on the general reporting requirements applicable to all facilities, and an overall look at the expanded reporting requirements, which discusses some common reporting issues. Please also review any of the relevant single window demonstration videos. Thank you.